Marvelous one, we are so dang close to having our football extravaganza episode talking about our picks for the Super Bowl, NFL MVP, how the Bears are going to fare this season. But we had to get through preseason first, and we'll get to that in just a second. You're here on the Sports Cubicle with the Marvelous one, Dan Marver, Devin Single, Paul Shavari, and myself, Mike Mercado. But before we get to the NFL, before we get to the Chicago Bears, Marvelous, you and I, we are hoop heads. We love basketball, whether it's the collegiate level, high school level, whether it's, of course, the NBA, the G League. We are obsessed with the association and the game itself. And something that you're seeing a lot right now is pro amps. You're seeing a lot of players playing in the Drew League. You're seeing a lot of players going to New York. And you just saw that Chet Holmgren story happen where he broke, essentially had a, a foot injury, and now he's going to be gone the whole season for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And it got me thinking. Marvelous one, it's something that national radio was talking about. Do we want to see these NBA players playing in these leagues? Do we want to see them having to do this with their bodies? There's so many different ways we go to this conversation. It's great that they're, they're honing their crafts. It's great that they're not doing stuff that's going to get them in trouble, like riding in motorcycles or going to clubs late at night. You know, stuff that any person shouldn't be doing when they're worth or valued that much. But we're seeing these injuries. Marvelous, you're somebody who loves to scout. Your family is deep in the, the game of basketball here in the state of Illinois, when you see this, is it a double-edged sword? Is it something that could be avoided? Where are you with pro basketball players, both men and women, doing these pro amps, playing in other leagues that aren't in the WNBA or the NBA? Yeah, you know, I'm wondering uh, if there's some kind of insurance that they tell you that they have. Oh, we were gone. <laughs> didn't see every minute. I mean, you know, they used to have like Lloyd's of London policies and everything. Mm -hmm. Where would you know where, which would exclude this kind of thing? You know, I have to give him credit though. He was guarding LeBron James apparently, <laughs> and uh, and I never you know there's a lot of things I haven't heard of. I, I never heard of a sacrum for last year. Now I've never heard of a list frame injury, which is what he had received. And apparently, it's the same thing that happened to Donis Haslam a couple years ago, where he missed the whole year. So I mean, I get where they play in the rookie league. I mean that makes sense to me. That shouldn't be excluded but some like a pro-am game i would think that possibly there's some liability there where they should you know where they shouldn't do that marvelous you know. do you remember what was the for the love of the game clause was that michael jordan was that who had that was that kobe was that lebron one of the main state players and let us know on twitter at sports cubicle tv i we can't pull it up right now but there yeah. are players who at some point did have for the love of the game clause in there so i guess now I want to get your, your coaching and your scouting head on this. Do you think there is a value of some of these dudes, even if it's just a game or two, going out there and playing against guys who are good enough to be in the G League and NBA, like in the Pro-Ams, opposed to going to, like, Lifetime or Export or any of these places and playing with slums like myself? Do you think it's a little bit safer for them to be playing in that environment where there are cameras and there are expectations opposed to playing against weekend warriors? I mean, obviously, you could even – be hurt in a pickup game you could be playing you know with your friends at the local y or something you know so i mean there's a million ways you could get hurt i mean i remember my my son got injured he was playing he was in a summer uh program at iowa and he and, he, and i think he was <laughs> playing against a bunch of guys from Simeon or something <laughs> and he really couldn't keep up with them so <laughs> so he stumbled and fell or whatever but all i remember is he yeah, is, is uh he, he had a he had a a sandal on one foot when I picked him up. But anyway, <laughs> be that as it may, I think that the pros they really have to protect themselves. I mean, this guy was the number two draft pick, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, after, after all, they've got to uh, they've got to you know the, the the teams have to protect their investment somehow, and to to be hurt in a in a game that really wasn't even part of his development is a no-no, I think. <laughs> and I'm glad you brought that up because this is where it becomes a unique situation, where it is Chet, who people are worried about his body frame to begin with. And now we're seeing him, like we just mentioned, guarding LeBron James, and we saw what happened when LBJ puts on the Jets just a little bit. And that's going to be somebody that if you're playing in Oklahoma City, theoretically you're going to play for the next few years, except mm -hmm. for, of course, now this season. There is a bright spot to this if you're Chet. This gives you a whole offseason to build that upper body to build right. some strength because he's going to need it. If he's going to play that position, I understand Kevin Durant is the body shape that he has, but he's the unicorn. He's the one that, that proves the rule. So I think that's going to be really good for him. Now, to take the, <laughs> the skeptic way of looking at this, 
Uh-huh. I do find it interesting that they will play in pro-am games. They will stay in shape. This is their form of working out, but they won't play back-to-backs or they will take load management. And I think load management is great during parts of a very long NBA season. But I do find it kind of funny, and I do think the optics are kind of funny, that we see some of these great summer league pro-am games, whether it's in L.A., whether it's in New York, here in Chicago, whatever, these showcases. But it is fascinating now that the NBA has kind of addressed that issue of, like, you got to play. You need to play these games. And if you don't, you won't be on Christmas. Sorry, Kawhi Leonard. You don't play enough. We can't trust you to put your brand out on Christmas because you're not going to play And I think for a lot of different players, that's what it comes down to is what is the benefit of doing these kind of things? And I wonder if in, in, in your eyes, when as such a fan of hoop, do you think that maybe we're heading into a time where these players are all about basketball? So they may not miss as many games anymore. We hear Kevin Durant to talk about all he does is play basketball. These dudes love the game. So do you think maybe now we're starting to see the transition to the love of the game guys? Well, there was a Michael Jordan uh, clause. I did look that up in the Google machine. Uh, where, where he was allowed to play anywhere he wanted, apparently. But here's the thing. I know how we could stop them from playing in games that, that are not, you know, other than the G, the G League or, what, or the, uh, the, the Rookie League. Mm-hmm. Make it in their contract that there'd be a financial loss yeah. should they get injured. That, that would take care of it. I'm surprised there isn't such a clause. Honestly, if I was an owner and I wanted to protect my investment, I'd, I'd want a clause that says if you don't, if you're playing in, games that aren't sanctioned by the team, you, there's, there's a financial loss to you. Now, that what do you tough. think about – well, it's interesting you bring that up, and I, this is a fascinating conversation. We want to know your thoughts. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marbury, it's Devin Tingle, Paul Shavari, myself, Mike Mercado. We're discussing some of this pro-am summer league stuff that is happening in the NBA where we've seen Chad Holgram now get hurt and it affecting the OKC Thunder. But we've seen LeBron James, DeMar DeRozan, a bunch of superstars playing. And I think this is maybe where the, the, the silver lining of – the contracts of maybe why the owners don't do as much. It's maybe the same reason why baseball owners don't do as much when guys go play in the Caribbean league during the off season, the risk of injury is a lot slower and maybe baseball and basketball for some of these dudes compared to like football, why they don't play in the USFL, why they aren't playing in the XFL. So maybe that's their way of the owner's way of thinking it is there's how many LeBron James are actually in the league. So does it matter if Derek Jones Jr. is playing, you know, like it doesn't matter if Kobe white is playing. So I, I, it's it, marvelous one. This is the one thing that I think basketball has over the other sports is it is a game that anybody can pick up and play and that never leaves your DNA. Whether you're 65 or 15, you pick up a hoop and you're going to shoot. You're going to shoot free throws. You're going to go around the world. You're going to play horse. You're going to play 21. Like it's ingrained. And I think that's something you can't take away from these players. But, you know, it's kind of fun to talk about basketball because while we're getting ready for football, that means – that basketball is getting ready to tip off soon. We may have college football. We may have NFL. But we do know at some point when the weather gets cold and we're all miserable and we don't have a Sunday to look forward to, we know on the sports calendar we will get to watch some NBA basketball. But any final thoughts on this really fun conversation? Oh, that, that's great. And you mentioned college football. Our Northwestern Wildcats and our Illinois Illini are tied for first place in the Big Ten West. <laughs> Big Ten <laughs> champions. Let's go. Woo! We want to know your thoughts. Let us know. We're on Twitter at Sports Keep it TV. You like this pro app stuff. What are you excited about about the NBA? It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingle. It's Paul Shavari. I'm Mike Mercado.